Hi guys, this is How I Sketches. Welcome to version 2 of the JC Lindecker Master Copy with a Modern Twist. Oh yeah. This version is going to have me talking in it because I know some people like to know about a process that went behind a whole piece of artwork like this. Especially with a master copy trying to emulate um, an actual physical traditional painting style in a digital setting. It's not easy. Unless you already know how to do it like a boss. Uh, kudos to you for that. Um, I'm only in my third year at um, the College for Creative Studies. I am an illustration major at the moment. Um, I think I found my niche after switching majors about three times. I am so excited to share this process with you. Um, it wasn't, it was not easy. I'm probably gonna say that over and over again. Um, struggles happened, especially this eye, this monstrous eye that I realized I needed reference for. That's something that people are scared of. Like they, they think that they have to come up with it from their brain or else it's not art. But you have to know what an eye looks like to draw an eye properly. You know, you just, you just gotta not be afraid of looking at reference. And this eye will change later. It looks kind of freaky right now. She's like, yes, look at the book. <laughs> the original painting actually was by J.C. Weindecker in an editorial probably a magazine in 1905 so I'm going to add a few things in here that probably were not around at that time the editorial illustration was I think for Easter and I think this is set in a church because what she's sitting in looks like a pew like the end of a pew at a church I'm not sure, I've never been to church before, I'm not Christian, but it's interesting, especially learning about um, different kinds of textures, especially in the wood that um, is shown here, uh, you'll see that very soon. Oh, my fingers, these fingers were so, were so beautiful. <laughs> I don't want to brag or anything, but I am very proud of these fingers because I studied them and I, I really wanted them to look real. I want them to look touchable. This thumb was added in because I wanted it to look like she was pressing onto the iPad or ginormous phone or whatever I'm gonna have that's sitting inside of this book here. The book is probably like a Bible or something. Oh, here is another big mistake that I made. Um, I changed it a while later. I'm just trying to get the feel of an iPad or a giant phone that she's hiding behind a book and sneaking in the church or wherever she is. And it was really hard to get it to look like that because people thought that it was just like a phone with a weird case. I don't know, it was really challenging to try to get it to come across. And that's with a lot of illustrations, you have to know how to Communicate with your audience. Communication design is essential with this kind of stuff. With any kind of stuff. And actually, you don't want people guessing. Unless you do want people guessing. But what if they're guessing about the wrong stuff? <laughs> I do make changes where it makes a lot more sense. Um, so you'll be seeing that. Um, probably around the last few minutes. Uh, this is another big mistake. I made the glow way too huge. Like, nothing, no phone glows that bright in a normal daylight setting. So we had to um, show our work to the class. Um, right when I finished that glow is around the time where I stopped and I went to class and I showed it to my professor. My professor told me, of course, like go back into all of the the areas and finish the detail work because, like, yeah, I've roughed it in. 
but bring down that glow because it's a little a little too too much too strong and find reference for that eye because that eye was just just horrific and here you see the textures of the wood really coming out. It's only like simple, fine details, but it's really bringing it out and bringing it alive. Like the depth is striking. The values here are so simple too. Um, it's just studying where the light is hitting it, where the shadows can go, what it's doing, the form, the shape what's influencing it, what is bouncing back, where is the reflection coming from. I'm no teacher. Like, trust me, I am not an amazing artist or anything. I am still learning and I want to learn more and more and I just want you to be on the journey with me. I know, I know sometimes it's annoying when somebody talks for so long, 20 whole minutes of non-stop talking. But sometimes people do like it and want to hear the whole process. That's why I have two versions of it. One where there is no talking at all and one where there is talking. So thank you for being on this journey with me. The process that I used was just having a value study underneath the initial painting with textures and colors because I wanted a structure. I wanted something to go off of, something that's easy and simple to um, recreate. And it was it was a lot easier going with this rather than probably starting off with color because I feel like I understood more of what was happening and also I can manipulate it more to my will. Especially because this is not just a master copy but it's a master copy with my own information that I have brought into it. So the original had the woman with her eyes more closed, kind of like she's bored reading the Bible, uh, with her mouth in a more solemn expression. I kind of bring her smile out and I open her eye as if she's excited about what she's looking at, which is an iPad or a, um, a phone that she's hiding inside of her book. I thought that would be cool and um, a little silly and something that probably all of us do or did at one point in time. Doing these flowers, these leaves were so, like it was really tedious but I enjoyed it a lot because when I got into the zone, I got into the zone and I pumped out all this work and there you see me erasing that glow because it was just not working out. It was way too overbearing, overpowering. The shadows, the shading, forming out these leaves and forming out the petals of the flowers just smoothened it and brought it more, brought it further back. And I think this was really essential to the composition of the piece and even adding to um, the dimensions. And it stopped distracting your eye because it looked like flowers and it, it looked less like big blobs of fluff. <laughs> which it looks like originally like look at the the flower to the bottom left and then look at the flower on the top left completely different creating brushes for this kind of um project is really important too because you want to get texture to make it look like a painting rather than a digital painting if you understand what I'm talking about, because the whole purpose of this assignment was to try to get it to look like it could be a painting. Like it could be with traditional media. I don't know for sure what um, media Linedecker used for this piece, but whatever it was, it's beautiful. I love Linedecker's work, his style, his hatches, his almost graphic, impressionistic, but very finely tuned. I especially love this piece because it had a single subject and it was a little easier to see all the details and it was less to work with, but more to work with at the same time. I could really focus and give my love to every corner. 20 hours and 20 minutes, that's a long time. And 
I had to take a lot of breaks. Um, some of these were like three hours back to back. I had to crop out some of the times where I was just, the computer was still sitting and recording and I probably forgot to turn it off. So a lot of this is, um, it's just my whole process. Here I'm fine tuning the hat, the ribbon, some mistakes, I'm fixing up, cleaning up. Oh, by the way, um, I'm just crediting the music in the background, which is from the garage band. I just mixed like three of the default tunes together and came up with this little jam. It's pretty funky. I like it. Oh yeah, that lump in that dress is killing me. Just watching it right now is getting on my nerves already. <laughs> Before I actually started in the digital phase, I did some thumbnailing um, in person on a normal sketchbook with pencil. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to change in the image to make it have like a little modern twist. I know it's very difficult to imagine this woman in nowadays kind of... Maybe you would see her in a church, but nobody wears a bonnet that huge. Um, I had a lot of time with this. Um, this glove area, the texture was... was was really fun. <laughs> you can see that I hatched it in the beginning, but then I filled it out like that, right there. Yep, filled it out. And I hatched through it. So instead of hatching the color I or the value, I hatched the negative space. And that worked out for me, especially with the original images um, view, what it looked like. Getting the colors right on this was a challenge. Getting the values right on this from the colors was a challenge. Um, it takes a lot of like studying color and how it looks like without the saturation. Bringing it up, pushing it back, trying to find what makes the piece cohesive. Here I'm fixing up the book a little bit. Adding the little detail, very subtle, that Weindecker had that I zoomed in and tried to figure out. Here I am finally fixing that ghastly eye. It looks more human now. A little dead inside. I don't know, gives her a little personality. Have to add that little light eye shine which is like my favorite part of anything. Uh, here I am trying to figure out the perspective again. Yep, that pink is where I want it to be. Yep. Trying to get the texture of the pages of the books before I start in with the iPad. That really helped a lot drawing through and figuring out where it's gonna be. It made it feel more like that phone or that iPad was in the book. I wanted to keep it maybe silver, like a normal iPad would look like, but it kind of, it didn't feel right. Something was missing. So here I'm adding a little bit of a glow, very soft compared to last time. All in here is adding color, which was really fun. The leaves in the back, the yellow, and it's like very subtle but it pops, it just feels so amazing. Uh, Line Decker's backgrounds are streaky and I used a textured brush, making sure that I left gaps. The color just brought it to life. So simple, small little overlays. I did the overlay in one layer, but then I went in with more detail and recolored it because look at it's it's just not cohesive enough. It's it's not like an actual painting where there are 
like different colors in the darks and different colors in the lights, the warms, the cools, everything that makes a painting so unique and original, especially with line decker, how impressionistic that he can be. It's beautiful. You can see me turning off and on the layer because I wanted to see the difference that I was making. I would also like closely compare it to the original image. I tried my hardest with this coloring because sometimes like you don't see that. Some of these lines look purple, some of them look orange, some of them look like like white almost. So going in there first with like a, an initial layer of coloring where it's like closer to the original's color. If you've got that glimpse of it from further back, it really pops. Like, yes, it does look pretty nice with an overlay, like, and just the overlay, but adding these colors on top with a different hue, different saturation, different lighting, it, it just makes it all the better. And especially with a master copy, you want it to look like the copy. You want it to look like the master's work. The folds of the dress were so creamy. I loved it. The warmth. It really, really put it together. The colors used in this was a lot of fun to use. I've never worked with a palette this warm. Even with that green that you see at the bottom of the screen. It, it's warm. It's very warm in this setting. The bump in the dress is still getting to me. Look at that weird knee bump. Hopefully I fix it later. I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to go in again and fix it and show you guys that next time. It's exciting having you guys listen in while I'm working, kind of. Oh yes, and the face looks dead because no face has gray in the in the corners or in the dark areas it doesn't make any sense so you have to have like browns and reds oranges yellows the lips like having the the planes on the face and understanding um, how light works it is it's really helpful the hands again here I am we're fine-tuning everything with the color it really I feel like it brings it to life it brings them off the page it makes you feel like you can hold her hand touch it even though it might not be so finely detailed it, it pulls it off the page here I am trying to figure out what to do with this iPad. I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just make it black. Oh, look, I forgot iPads have um, headphone jacks right there. Maybe I'll have it in a case, a black case. Here I am adding glow, a little bit of blue because I don't want it to be like a white glow. I want it to be like blue because, you know, um, technology is blue. Here I'm adding a detail that really brings out the iPad so you can tell it's an, a device and not just some random thing that's in her hand. Um, I didn't really reference for this. Um, I might, I should have probably, but I think since it was such a small detail it wasn't gonna distract too much from the eye. I know how um, headphones work probably because I twist mine up all the time, so um, getting the texture of that was fun. Here is like one of my favorite parts, which is really fine tuning and adding the final layer of texture over the designs, bringing it out, straightening it, because before it looked a little fuzzy, now it looks like it has dimension, like there's depth, like it's alive. And I'll use that word a lot because it does, it feels alive. And we're so close to the end of the video, which makes me kind of sad, but you're probably very happy. <laughs> I 
this blanket. It wasn't as hard as it probably looks. It was um, also very loose in the original. So um, just following how his work was, was pretty simple in that respect. Using textured brushes was a lot of a lot of fun. It was a lot cooler to work with than just the simple straight up circle that Photoshop usually starts you off with. Here I am finally adding finishing beautiful textured designs onto this wood, which is probably like something that I just want to crop out of the image and just stick on my wall or something because how much time I took on this wood is probably just way too much. The background just adding just a little hue, adding a little hue of blue, finishing up the bonnet, adding the last layer of textures, fixing up the ribbon, and as you can hear the music fading away, here's the final piece. Lacey Lion Deco Master Copy with a modern twist, the original. This is the digital. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.